I'm a doctor, and what I'm about to tell you may save your life. One in ten patients suffers avoidable harm. It costs the NHS £15 billion a year to fix these preventable mistakes. Even worse, 9,000 patients die every year needlessly. That's around 30 people every single day. I almost became one of those patients. A few days after a routine colonoscopy, I started to bleed. At first, I ignored it like we all do. I even went to work in my intensive care unit, but I felt terrible, so I went home. Even still, I didn't act until my son said, Dad, you look terrible. That's when I finally went to hospital. The team in A&E were amazing. They rapidly infused fluids, stabilized my condition, and sent me to the ward. I was going to have observations and likely another procedure. The nurses on the ward were doing their best, but it was really busy. You could see how stretched they were. They checked my vital signs. I had tests and scans. Doctors came and went, but I was still bleeding. To my huge relief, though, the team looking after me told me that my colonoscopy results had come back clear. That was great news. But I was still bleeding, and actually, it was getting worse. And I could see that this was getting lost in the chaos of the ward. My relief turned to horror as I realized, even though I now knew I didn't have cancer, I could die anyway from the bleeding. And suddenly, from this side of the looking glass, as a sick patient lying in a hospital bed, I realized just how hard the job is for them, how hard it is for them to see what's going on inside my body, to know what I'm feeling and what's only obvious to me as a patient. This was really uncomfortable. I'm a doctor. I'm normally part of the team, but not on that day. What was even worse was that a new computer system was sending my blood results as they were doing them to my phone in real time. I mean, that was a revelation. I could see how quickly and how low my blood levels were dropping. And I knew I would need a blood transfusion as well as just fluids to keep me going until they could do something to stop that bleeding. But for some reason, the team looking after me disagreed. I knew they were wrong. They weren't following best practice guidelines. But there was absolutely nothing I could do about it. This was getting really scary. If this can happen to me, as a senior NHS doctor, it can certainly happen to you. I'm an intensive care consultant. This is what I do. I try and spot things before it turns into something catastrophic. But it's hard. It's harder than people realize. It's like detective work, piecing together clues, trying to spot our deteriorating patients, trying to step in before it gets critical, trying to step in before it's too late. But these clues, they're subtle and they're often hidden from view. And some of the best information we can get, it's from the patients themselves. And it's often information we fail to see. So I began to wonder, is there a way to make the patients part of the team, to make the information that they, and only they hold, easier for us to see. And there are lots of stories like mine, especially in young, fit patients. Martha was a 13-year-old girl admitted to hospital after a simple bike accident. But during her stay, she got worse. Doctors and nurses missed important signs that she was developing a serious infection. Her mum could see this, though, and raised concerns again and again, but nobody listened. A few days later, Martha died. The coroner 
highlighted five missed opportunities to save her life. Now, nobody goes to work to do a bad job. Nobody in healthcare wants to make a mistake like that. And despite the challenges, we know there's a long way to go with patient safety. We know we can do better. In the end, we, the doctors and the nurses, want what you want. We're on the same side. We're on the same team. So how can we make that happen? Well, luckily, Martha's Rule is a new NHS patient safety initiative inspired by Martha's tragic story and loss. Every patient, every day, will be asked whether they feel better or worse than the day before. And if they feel worse, their care must be escalated, either to a more senior member of staff or even a totally different team. If nothing seems to be happening, you as a patient or your relatives now have the right to escalate and trigger a call for concern. A specialist nurse will review urgently and just check that the team looking after you are doing everything necessary and possible. So how can a stretched NHS healthcare system deliver this effectively and at scale? Hospitals are full of brilliant people and cutting edge technology. Yet lives are still lost, not due to a lack of skill, but because we're working fast and we're stretched to our limits and we miss things, sometimes vital pieces of information. How can that be, you ask? Well, there are far too many patients competing for the attention of too few staff. Many of the tasks are high priority, but they just can't all be done at the same time. Nurses check vital signs like heart rate and blood pressure every six hours on a ward, but deterioration doesn't wait for the next set of checks. The problem isn't just the people, though. It's the systems around us. And we can't magically hire thousands of extra doctors and nurses. But what we can do is improve the rate at which the doctors and the nurses communicate with the patients and how rapidly they respond. Extracting information from patients in the middle of the night in the half-light of a lamp is very old-fashioned. Many hospitals have only just moved from written paper records to a centralised electronic health record. So let me tell you about a bit of technology that I've been developing over the last few years that solves this problem. It would have helped me, and it could help you in the future. 96% of us own one of these, a smartphone. Patients on the wards are already using them, watching TV, listening to music, phoning their families. We use them. We use them in important aspects of our lives, vital aspects like banking, even dating. We use them for everything. So why not in healthcare? What if patients could report important symptoms and signs to us directly from their phones? A great example of this is pain. 70% of patients in hospital at some point have pain. As a doctor, I can't see inside your brain. Only you know how much pain you've got. So in a study I led, we asked patients to report their pain on a scale from 0 to 10 using an app we developed. Using AI, we analysed their reported pain scores, prioritising patients with the greatest need, sending alerts to the acute hospital pain team. The results were impressive. Pain after surgery was reduced by 50%. Prescriptions for pain-killing opioid drugs like morphine down by a whopping two-thirds. Like planes use radar to spot trouble ahead, what the app and the AI are doing is helping us treat pain before it becomes a problem. Stepping in early is the key. And here's the thing. What this app can do for pain, it can do for many other medical symptoms. 
So I thought, could I go further? Could I adapt the app for a wider purpose? Could we use it to get the best information so we can make the best decisions? What this app can do is really important. It empowers the patients. It gives them a voice. It makes them part of the team. It helps us to help you. What if we could make Martha's Rule a digital process? In the future, patients will be using scales developed to highlight deterioration before the vital signs have changed. If you feel shivery, if you haven't passed urine, if you feel short of breath, these are red flag symptoms. The sooner we know, the faster we can act. This isn't science fiction either. A similar approach at Newham Hospital in London is already saving lives. In the first year that Martha's Rule has been piloted in the NHS, one in 10 of the patient-triggered alerts has already resulted in life-saving changes in treatment, whether that's new antibiotics, admission to an intensive care unit, or even transfer to a specialist centre. In the first three months alone, 14 patients survived who would otherwise likely have died. Understandably, many of people listening to this talk will think, can patients even use phones? It's a worry. Can older patients use phones? Many can. But for those who can't, the nurses will have much more time to help them. Does this replace nurses? Absolutely not. It'll help nurses support those patients with the greatest need. Is it extremely expensive? No. Preventing just a few avoidable intensive care unit admissions will save the system millions. So, you might be wondering what happened to me. 24 hours after my admission, at five in the morning, I'd lost half my blood volume. My vital signs finally deteriorated. At that point, I received a transfusion. I had an emergency procedure. The bleeding finally stopped. I survived. I was lucky. But it really shouldn't come down to luck, should it? The future of healthcare is not just in medicine. It's in better connection, digital engagement, and earlier intervention. If you find yourself in hospital in the future, which of these two is more likely to save your life? Let's get connected and save lives together. <laughs>